The procedure in this video is performed to achieve root coverage of an upper canine with a 4 mm deep gingival recession and minimal amount of remaining keratinized tissue. The first step consists of placing the mucoderm in sterile saline solution and to set it aside to soak for 20 minutes. After anesthesia, horizontal incisions are made mesally and distally to the affected tooth at a distance from the tip of the papilla equal to the recession depth plus 1 mm. Two vertical releasing incisions are then extended to the alveolar mucosa. These incisions must be as short as possible to avoid scar formation. The next step is to elevate the surgical papillae to a split thickness. To do this, one needs to follow the bleeding line and making a very bevel incision, elevate the mesial and the distal corners of each trapezoidal papilla. Once both corners have been elevated, it is much easier to keep the blade, blind, parallel to the soft tissue and give each surgical papilla a uniform thickness from the most coronal to the most apical extension. The soft tissue apical to the root exposure is elevated to full thickness, inserting a small periosteal elevator into the probable area and proceeding in the apical direction in order to expose 2 to 3 millimeters of bone beyond the bone crest. Next, perform deep incisions in the lateral areas of the flap, with the blade parallel to the bone, detaching the muscles of the alveolar mucosa from the periosteum, thus leaving the periosteum to protect the underlying bone. Once the alveolar mucosa is completely detached from the periosteum, the inclination of the blade is changed, and the whole extension of the blade is used to go in apical direction, keeping it parallel to the alveolar mucosa. These incisions, called the superficial incisions, are necessary in order to detach the muscles from the alveolar mucosa to allow for the advancement of the flap. Root planning is done with MIDI 5 curettes and PREF gel is applied on the root surface and left for 2 minutes. After rinsing vigorously, Emdogain is applied on the root surface. Measurements are made to establish the required dimensions of mucoderm. The height of the mucoderm should be 3 mm more than the height of the root exposure, while the width of the mucoderm should be 6 mm more than the recession width, measured at the cemento enamel junction. The mucoderm is cut with a blade. The anatomic papillae are de-epithelialized, which is done from the base of the papilla with the blade kept parallel to the external aspect of the keratinized tissue until the apex is reached. The apex is de-epithelialized with microsurgical scissors following the cut previously prepared with the blade. The mucoderm is placed in situ. It must be positioned 1 mm coronal to the cemento enamel junction and extend 2 mm apically with respect to the buccal bone crest. 7-0 PGA sutures are used to fix the mucoderm with interrupted sutures at the base of the anatomic papillae. The first suture of the flap is along the mesial vertical releasing incision. With anatomical tweezers, the surgical papilla is held above the anatomic papilla and a series of single interrupted sutures are made along the vertical releasing incision with 7-0 PGA sutures. The second suture of the flap is along the distal vertical releasing incision, always starting from the most apical extension of the vertical releasing incision in coronal direction. All knots are blocked along the vertical releasing incision to ensure tight adaptation. After the vertical releasing incisions have been sutured, sling sutures are made to suture the surgical papillae in place, which is done by perforating surgical, anatomical, and palatal aspects. The suture is turned around the palatal cingulum of the tooth and then brought back buccally, below the contact point, where the perforation through the surgical, anatomical, and palatal aspects is repeated. The suture is then brought back to the starting point where the knot of the sling suture is closed. This suturing technique helps to achieve a double compression of the surgical papillae above the anatomic papillae and a perfect adaptation of the keratinized tissue above the convexity of the clinical crown.